Hi, I'm back. Um, today, today, um, I have, I've been thinking this over. I really wanted to do a video about, um, a certain line of, uh, pasty symbols that, um, and to some extent go beyond the 2002s, dare I say. Um, because the 2002s are really just all unbelievable symbols. Um, so are those giant beats. Uh, they're unbelievable symbols too. Um, um, but um, I have developed um, a secret place in my heart for the pasty signature line symbols. And um, I, uh, the story goes for me. At least. I first discovered this symbol through one of my teachers uh, uh, I call, his name is Ian Froman. He's a great, uh, a great, he was a great teacher and a great, he is a great drummer um, from Canada, I guess, originally now he's living in New York. Um, that's another subject, another, another video. But I was taking lessons from him and one day I, I, I walked into his room and, um, and, uh, and I and I saw that and I saw the symbol and I said, "Hey, what is that?" And he said, "Oh, um, uh, I mean, I'm recalling this from my memory, right?" Um, he said, uh, "It's a." He showed it to me. It's a pig, it's a pasty uh, signature dry ride, and uh, he and I and I'm I'm pretty sure uh, I could be wrong, but I'm. It was uh, one. It was the symbol. This particular one. I think he said it was the one used on the Metalwood recording. Um, so if you know Ian Froman um, and that Metalwood album, the one at Juno Award, the the, the red one, um, I guess the first Metalwood album that won the Juno Award, um, the, the album starts with him riding on this symbol, and this is supposed to be that symbol. Show it to you. So I wanted it. And at the time, I think I traded him a traditional pasty ride. Pasty traditionals are unbelievable. Um, and he was like, sure. So here it is. This is his. Now, I have since then cleaned it. And I know he'll probably kill me. He had made it even drier with paint under on the bottom. And it was, it, I took it off. He saw me like, what did you, you know, but I took it off um, uh, because I want to use it and it, it's just, it just wasn't my vibe. I wanted, I wanted it to ring, but it still is a secret place in my heart. This is, uh, you know, I know it to be because uh, I took lessons from him that this is uh, Ian Froman's signature dry ride um, and uh, on that Metalwood album, right? And I mean, it's just, it's an amazing can you see how it's lathed and hammered? I'll pull it back so you can kind of see that. Now it it it, it is it recalls a little bit of the procedure that you see in the the B twenty Constantinople ride, right? In another video that I have, um, it's a heavy, heavy symbol, dry rides, right? Um. The dryness, okay, how do you get the dryness of a symbol, first of all? Um, it's a combination of lathing and hammering. If you just hammer, um, you'll get a very dry ride if you'll just hammer it. Um, the lathing uh, spreads out the harmonics of the symbol um, at, a, at a, generally, you know, at a, like a record, you know. Um, so it, 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 my experience, the lathing creates the high frequencies, frequencies, um, helps distribute those high frequencies and the, the hammering disrupts those frequencies as they're spreading down to the, the bottom of the symbol, right? Cause sound starts here and goes this way on the symbol. Um, uh, and so as that frequency is going spinning around the lathing and going down the symbol it encounters the the hammering the dimples and that disrupts that frequency and it starts to it um, diminishes 
um, I guess the result is that it it lowers the tonality somehow. I don't know exactly. I don't know exactly how, but that's what happens. Um, uh, now, depending on how many dimples there are, um, uh, or if it's unlathed and there are no hammering, it can be very dry. So let's say that again. No lathing, unlathed, no lathing, and no dimples, no hammering makes a very dry symbol. Um, unless it's uh, like a flat ride, uh, but generally speaking, flat rides are they have this, they have their lathed. So what am I saying? I'm thinking of a 602 that I have that it has it's lathed. So think of like an entry level symbol that has no lathing and that's um, yeah, there's no hammering. They're generally very very dry, like um, your pots and pans, clank clank, right? Dry, not being dry, you would have a resonance. Bang! That's not dry, right? <coughs> so, um, so it's either no lathing, no hammering, or a really good combination of the hammering on the symbol that makes it dry because it disrupts the frequencies as it's spreading around the symbol. And so Pasty came out with this thing called Dry Ride, and they came out with Full Ride, and then just Ride, and they had a whole line of crashes and all kinds of amazing signature series symbols. And what is the signature series? Well, they say on their page, Pasty says that it's the first time that they, they it's actually not the first time, not despite what they say, but because they, they made an effort, maybe it's, they made it, they clearly made an effort with the Stambul 65 and uh, which resulted in the 2005s and uh, with a lot of the other ones too. Um, 602s or B20s, uh, special formulas, but anyway. Uh, but they they say that the signature series is um, uh, I is is a special attempt to come up with um, a, a special pasty formula um, like the ultimate. I guess, pasty alloy, the ultimate pasty alloy for all situations, for just having the, the best symbol possible. Um, and um, and over the years, um, well, I, actually, before I get there, so what is that alloy? <laughs> Turns out, uh, they, it's, a bron it's bronze alloy, but and what is bronze? Bronze is roughly 12.5% uh, um, copper, right? Um, uh, uh, it's it's basically a B eight. That's what I mean to say. Um, a bronze is basically a B eight. There's there's that that within copper. That's it. Twelve point five percent of tin and copper. So that's the B eight. That's <laughs> you know minus the five percent. And they say. Um, that there, there can be some additional things in there, zinc, magne magnesium, I guess, um, magnesium, so, yeah. uh, um, silver, you know, uh, there can be other stuff, but for the most part, 12.5% um, tin mixed with copper, which is B8. So there's something very B8-E about the signature line symbol, but when you have a when you have a signature line symbol just next to a 2002 you notice the difference the 2002 has a, a more uh, golden orangey look to it you see the copper more whereas the signature line ha there's a yellow thing uh, that happens with them and I, you know you will never see a signature line that has that copper goldish look to it um, so there obviously is a difference um, and, uh, <clears throat> in, in, I, in my experience, I mean, like I originally said with this episode, I, I, I have, de there's, I developed a certain place in my heart for these symbols. Um, and, um, I love them. Um, if I had money, I would get a ton of them in addition to the 2002s, but I would get a ton of them. I have two crashes. I have a 15 inch crash. And I have uh, Ian's 16-inch um, crash, and uh, I those symbols, you know, they're they have a 
Do I have those in here with me? Probably not. Yeah, I'll have them in here. They have a, um, it's so interesting. I mean, you can kind of see it with this. I want to talk about the lathing here. You can't really see it right there. But the lathing, it's as if they did the lathing with um, like a thick Sharpie that, that size. So you see, uh, you, you can kind of see how thick the lines are, right? As opposed to like a Zildjian, classic Zildjian thing. Right? There's actually multiple styles of lathing on this. You can see under that, under that thick, sharpie um, thickness, I guess, <laughs> um, you can see um, it looks like the initial, for the first lathing, was a very, very, very fine lathing that, they, that you'll see in like flat ride symbols. Um, extremely thin. Very, very, very fine. <clears throat> all over the place. And on top of that, and I also want to say, I can't tell if they did which came first in this respect. In this, if the, sometimes you can tell if they lathed and hammered and then you know you can tell the which one came first depending on how the lathing looks um uh they definitely hit the hammer hit the symbol from the underside you can see you can see uh bumps like there's dimples that come up and come and go down so if i go on this side you can see that they flipped the symbol over at one point and hit it this way too and created dimples on the other side. So there's there's hammerings on both sides of the symbol, which is not always the case. So they are actually putting a lot of effort in these symbols, right? That's number one, hammering on both sides. Number two, there are two different kinds of lathing processes evident. There might be more, but you can see two, the very fine one, and then there's that big Sharpie lathing process all the way around. Um, um, that's a lot for a symbol to spend that much time on. Ah, and I'm, all, I'm already seeing, there's another, I never noticed that. There's another um, smaller eraser style um, hammer, hammering process on the very edge of the symbol. Can't believe I missed that, yeah. On the edge of the symbol, that's reminiscent of the same size that they used in the Giant Beats. I don't know if you can, can you see that? There's a very small, I don't know if you can see that there. Yeah, right, maybe right there. See, they're not the same as these big ones here. These ones, there's the little ones. Right? All around. That's really important, all contributes. They have really worked on this symbol. Um, the other ones seem to be the same size. There doesn't seem to be another variation of this thing. So, I mean, just, that's a lot of work on a symbol. That's a tremendous amount of work. And these typically are very expensive symbols. These signature line symbols are really, they're, they're up there with 2002s and technically speaking should be um, after, should be on the same level as the traditionals. And uh, now they're, they're, they're master series, you know, I guess it's a continuation of this, but it's, um, now um, the domes, on top, there's one more thing I want to talk about, the lathing process, but the domes are on the rise are typically enormous. I find these domes, like, look at that. I mean, that's like your whole hand can, is right on that, as opposed to like a, um, you know, as opposed to, um, I don't know if talk about this symbol too. Opposed to, I mean, a thousand symbols. Why not bring this one up too? As opposed to this one, you see that dome? Hey, it's a small one, right? Most symbols are 
have a dome that's relatively small. This is very 2002, very, um, uh, you can, a Zildjian, uh, a Vita symbol can be this, this dome, this wide, you know, next to, look at that dome, see? Huge. Huge, it's a, it's, a, it's a big difference. Now, why is that so important? Well, the dome with a symbol, that a dome is, un, is crucial for the sound of a symbol. Um, if you put your hand on this dome and hit the symbol, it will choke the whole thing. The, something happens, I guess, with the symbol where the sound is, starts here and is distributed across the sound, this, the, the symbol. So I guess when you hit it, even though maybe you hit it there, maybe the sound shoots up to the bone, dome, the bell, and then comes back. But anyway, if you put your hand here and play, it's very, very different. Um, so that, I guess the larger the dome, the, the bell, the more, you know, pronounced the symbol is going to be. And that's, in this case, a lot of these signature rides have that full ride, big dome, you know. Um, you're not going to see a small dome there. Um, there's also something that, that I love about these, and they, they're unlike any other symbol. It seems like after they did the lathing and the hammering, um, it's like they took, like they, they somehow sliced it all, all down and made like a, like a flat glass, like they just went and the crashes, this one doesn't, the, the dimples, you can still feel the, the, um, the hammering, but on the crashes, it's it's like glass. It's just like they just went and cut off the tops, and it's just glass. Um, the 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 top is and the bottom. Instantly. So they have. I love that. I, I'm sure it, it it um it adds to how the symbol, how the sound is distributed in the symbol, how it projects. It's very very classy. It's an unbelievably classy symbol, and I remember hearing um, John J. R. Robinson talking about how signature series, they just make you sound better. And he kind of stopped for a second when he said that, and, and it was true. He didn't take it back. They do. They make you sound better. They, there's a there's an element of class. It's like, you know, when you put on a tux and you go out, that's what these symbols do. Those, they, they, they add something um, uh, that is just, that... It's so, the sound is so harmonious and pure. Um, it's the purest symbol I've ever heard in my life, the, the signature series symbols, especially the crashes. Now, some people criticize them because they think, because they say that they're, they're um, not that they're square, but they're too, heaven forbid I say that, they're, but they're, that they're, they're too, um, um, they're too perfect almost. The signature series symbols are just, they're so unbelievably exactly what a symbol should be, um, that they don't have any rough edges. Signature crashes have, I, you know, I can't imagine one having any rough edges in the sound, in the projection. They all sound beautiful. I would love to have a ton of them. I saw, uh, it reminds me, I saw um, um, a documentary on Nashville drumming. I forget his name. But he was talking about signature symbols, and he had all he was using was signature symbols. This was like, this was like a, a famous hardcore national no, national Nashville drummer in the recording studio, and in the style of Jeff Porcaro, where he's just recording song after song after song for everybody, all the the songwriters. He would he had signatures all over the place, and I was like, oh, of course, because. Uh, they record unbelievably well. Their sound is exactly what needs to be a symbol. There's there's never any problem. Nobody's ever going to say, oh, I don't like that symbol. They'll never say it. They all sound beautiful um, and classy, which is not the case for 2002's um, uh, uh, because, although I love, I mean, now I'm really criticizing unbelievably I'm exaggerating my criticism of 2002s because they are hands down, you know, they're the B8, the star, B8 star. But there's a ring and there's um, uh, um, a little bit more muscle in a 2002. 
it's you know um it, it, it's yeah it's a little bit more muscle you know if i was doing a lionel richie gig for example i would use the signatures if i was doing a van halen gig 2002s um if i was doing acdc 2002s if i was doing um i don't know if i was michael jackson signatures uh if i was doing Aerosmith 2002s. If I was doing um, Michael Bolton signatures. If I was doing hmm Toto. Kind of both of them. It's hard to say because they both Toto has the edge and the classiness at the same time, which is why they're so great. Anyway, so a rough idea of signatures. Unbelievable symbols, well worth your money. I every once in a while I see some of them cracked, but they're it's very. I mean, you got to really bang on them to crack them. They're generally very heavy, well built, well constructed, well thought out symbols. The top of the line, uh, pasty line signature symbols. Then after that, traditionals came out to go up against basically the Constantinopoles. It was their version of it, which they're beautiful too. Uh, it's another video. And now they're into the Master Series, which I'm not sure yet. Uh, I haven't got my hands on one of those. I'll see about that. Um, so signatures, um, hands down, you know, in an ideal world, I'd, I'd, I'd have 2002s, 404s, 405s, Giant Beats, uh, Stambles, 65s, um, signatures, you know, for all occasions. But most of it is, I mean, it's still a B8. Right. I mean, come on. It's a B. There's something going on. It's a special thing. In my opinion, it's more of the hammering, but the yellow gold thing is different. And so there's a there's a little there's some there's a little edge to it that they got with this one that takes whatever was the B in the 2002 and it just puts on the hippest tuxedo that they could do with the symbol, and you get a signature line. Now, get this. I have. <clears throat> I found something that I didn't know existed, and it's turned out to be one of my favorite rides. Oh, I gotta clean that, huh? Oh, look, look, look. Can you see that green? I don't know if you can see it. Oh, come on. I'll show it to you right there. Can you see? I can't get that in the reflection. There's green. There it is. You can see it right there. That. You might not be able to see the color, but that's green, and it needs to be cleaned. The, the Some oil got on the symbol, and it turned a little green, and there you go. So that, yet again, why you need to clean your symbols, so I got to clean it. Because it'll eventually stain the symbol, and, uh, uh, and that you don't want that. So I got I to gotta get rid of that. Not a problem, though. Same way, this is a B8, same way I'll use um, the, that famous... Um, me or thing and I'll take it right out um look at this now this one is crazy pasty flanger ride and I was like for me I was like what is that and this is one of the rarest rarest of rarest pasty rides you will ever see in your life um some people I saw they had said that this is like Zildjian's the equivalent of like the Zildjian doom symbol this symbol I, I'm waiting for a gig to use it as a full-time ride. Um, uh, and I got enough nerve to do that. Uh, but I'm, 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 it's in a project right now. I'm working on it. Anyway, so this is a flanger ride. And you see that it is very, it's essentially like the signature, right? It looks the same kind of yellowy thing. It's not, it doesn't have that copper thing that the 2002 has. Um, um, the hammering is from the underside of the symbol. So the dimples you're seeing here are all coming up. They're not going down. So that means they turned it over and went bam, 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 all on, on the underside only, right? Um, and you can see, ah, uh, that's hard to say. They double laid it like the signature did. I want to say 
I can't tell if that means that they did that hammering before or after. Why can't I? Anyway, that's hard to tell. Um, but the hammering's on the underside, anyway. Dome is small, and this thing... I'm in an apartment, so I don't want to... You know, I can't play him, unfortunately. But... Do you see how it's moving? It's amazing. And it has such a, a smokiness. Like a... Just... You know that song, John Revelator? Uh, by, um... Sunhouse. This thing just like, it's just like, when you hear it, you just kind of like, uh, you like you you're, it it awakens something in you, you know. I love symbols like that. I really do. Um, I think that I think all drummers, there's something about drumming that that that's. When you play, you crack, you, you hear that thing, and it, it like, it wakes something up in you. Um, I, th I think that all drummers have that. Um, uh, or, or you get addicted to being woken up. It's, the, it, whether it's this. You, know, you want to go, um, you know, you want to do that. Or you hear a snare crack or a bass drum, you know, thing. It, yeah, maybe just wake something up deep inside you, profoundly in you, and then you once that wakes up, you never want it to go to sleep again. That's why I said in another video when I'm not playing drums, not to say that life is boring, but man, it's just, you miss the intensity of it. So anyway, this one when you put a stick to it, now check out the symbol exposition, PZ symbol exposition that I did. You'll hear the smokiness of the symbol in that video. Um, but live, there's nothing like it. I remember the first time I got it, I was so amazed at this symbol. I've never heard of any other symbol before in my life like this. And I never even, I've never, to tell you how rare this is, I have never even um, seen another one. That is how rare this thing is. I haven't even seen another one. Um, uh, uh, the only one that I saw is the one that I have. <laughs> Talk about craziness. Pasty flanger ride. Um, this thing is just, I'm, I'm, like I said, I'm working on a project to have to, 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 to really take advantage of the, the magic of this symbol. Um, but it's hard, you know, it's hard. You can't just throw it into a pop album. You know, it's, it's not like that. It's, uh. Maybe you could. It'd be a funny pop album. Um, anyway, um, check it out. If you find one of these, I mean, it might not be your cup of tea, but um, it certainly is mine. Um, um, check it out. I think, I want to say that they made crashes, but it's so strange because... It's paste, it says pasty here, and then the serial number, which I want to say that's 2001. Or maybe it's 91. I don't know, I haven't quite understood the pasty. I know, I know a little bit about the serials, but I haven't spent enough time to, to confidently talk about them yet. Um, because there, some of them don't match right, and I don't know. Um, well, actually, with this version when uh yeah with the pasty stamp if it's in the same line if it's not in the same line yeah i'm not gonna talk about it yet i'll come back with that explain how to read the serials um but all this says is pasty flanger rod swiss made that's all it says there's no like series you know there's no there's nothing under the bell right see there's nothing generally you know Signatures have that under the bell. There's nothing there. So what is this thing? Um, what 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 series does it belong to? We don't know. I don't know. Um, I'm gonna look into that. But um, there you go. Flanger, flanger ride, crazy, and the signature line. Um, what a wonderful. Uh, <laughs> my son is listening to uh, Old McDonald. He's laughing. 
Now he's playing his piano. I don't know if you can hear that. I can hear it. Anyway. Um, so I wanted to, to, to show you that. Uh, talk about these signature line symbols. Um, this one, it's not a signature line symbol, this one. Um, signature line never had this big black pasty thing on the on this on the top side. It was on the bottom side, I think. On some of this wasn't having more signature line symbols. Um, they have their logo is written like a signature. Uh, so um, that's how you can kind of check it out. It's a black. Um, uh, signature font. Um, so this is obviously not that. But those signature symbols, man, are beautiful and they're still very expensive. Even though, I don't even think they make them anymore, they're still very expensive to get though. Um, uh, if you can get your hands on them, those are definitely ones to pick up uh, for super classy gigs. Recording, would they would be phenomenal in recording. Um, and, uh, if you want, check out, check out, I forget his name, he's a hardcore Nashville recording drummer. So he's recording for country bands and singer-songwriters, and he, he really gloriously showcases uh, and talks about those signature line pasty symbols, um, and, and why the, and, and also check out John J.R. Robinson's talk about signature line symbols, um, you'll see. Uh, they're amazing. And otherwise, you know, give it up for this one. This one's supposed to be the Metalwood uh, symbol from Ian Froman. I'm going to do another video uh, about about some of my teachers, one of which, you know, Ian Froman, but this is supposed to, his. It's supposed to be his. Um, I mean, I know it is. Like, he gave it to me in his hand, from his hand, so. Um, I don't know if you can hear that. It sounds beautiful. It has that same kind of ah. That, I, that's something I'm I'm happy I just remembered to tell you. I have found. I originally said that that I have developed over the years a, a, a warm place in my heart for this symbol because the the playing them when they're in the room, the impression you have is not the same as when you record them, not exactly the same. And it's a very mysterious thing. Um, all symbols are like that. You can make a very bad symbol sound wonderful with, with, the, the, with the mixing techniques we have today and the, and the, the technology. But this symbol, um, uh, it somehow, it, it translates through a microphone just, Put on a bow tie, put on a tux, that's what it does. It just, it, it's, there's, and it's not, unless you record with it and hear that, you might miss that about these symbols. Um, not about the crashes, but the rides. The crashes, it's very apparent when you, you hear, you play them and they're just glorious. But the rides, it's not totally the case. And um, you take, you have to record them to discover that they're just the rides. What you thought might have been very, very present in the microphone, it translates to a it it's it translates to a wonderful a wonderful power that is very harmonious and flexible. You can you can manipulate it very easily and um, and and reduce or accentuate the harmonies in the symbol without having it turn into another symbol, which is which is oftentimes what happens when you do that with symbols. If I were to put on a, that Constantinople 22 that I have, record it, and I were to um, try and reduce the harmonies, it would turn into another symbol. If I were to try and raise the harmonies, it would turn into another symbol. This one, it doesn't do that. It it somehow maintains its identity um, when you do that. And, and it took me recording it to discover that. And I, and, and uh, that's it. I want to, I'm glad I remember that because that was, um, 
that's a large part of why I, I, I fell in love with them because I realized you can't, I can't, couldn't do that with a lot of other symbols. Now, if you put it next to a 2002, I think so. Um, you know, it's because it, it, again, we're talking about, we're criticizing, you know, exaggerating our criticisms uh, because ultimately it still is based on a, a B8 symbol. Um, uh, if you want to know why I'm saying that, there's another video I put out. Uh, the Stamble 65, and you'll see. So this could kind of be like part two of the Stamble 65 video that I put out, actually, now that I think of it.